So we're up bright and early to make the tide. We're getting out of Dugong Bay and we're going to go and have a look at a drying reef at Molina Island. So we're heading out now. It's a, it's a nice sunrise. It's a good time to be alive. Um, the reason we have to work the tide is when we came in, you saw all the uh, crazy currents and things. Well, we don't want to be fighting those because we won't. We'll just go backwards. Farewell, Dugong Bay. <laughs> a little bit chilly here in the Kimberleys. Got to keep warm somehow. <laughs> We've just put the anchor down near Malima Island because there's a bit of exposed reef here and uh, this particular bit of reef is interesting to us because it it's exposed for a good portion of time when the tide is low, perhaps five, six hours at least a day depending on whether it's spring or neap tides. So yeah, the creatures that live there have to withstand being in and out of the water constantly. So we're, we're going to go and have a look in the dinghy. So that's an acropora coral, really fast growing. And most people think of these as really fragile, but obviously this one can can handle a fair bit of abuse. All of these, all of these hard corals up here are very, very resistant to exposure, sunburn. So a giant clam covered in barnacles here. So this guy's still open. <laughs> he wasn't quite keen on that. Giant clams like to live in the shallows because they have algaes that are living in their tissues and that helps them make their food. But this one's, it's not even fixed to the bottom. So these would be really ripe for exploitation, like people come and grab them for food. There's the mouth. So these are just one single giant coral. When you're looking at all these corals, they're colonial, lots of little corals. You can see the individual corals in other ones, but this is just one coral living all by itself. Clam just trying to squirt at us. Mm. And these guys can actually choose to move if they want. They can, they can blow up their tissues, comes out of this skeleton, and use the tide to sort of flip them over. Not in any sort of like, they don't cruise around like a starfish might, but they can can have some say as to where they'd like to live. This is really popular for aquariums, cataphilia. So this one's well and truly fixed in there, but some of them just growing in the sand loose. When the water fills up, this will just be out. sand flat.
approach the horizontal waterfalls and it's an hour and 20 minutes after slack tide which is the right time for us to cross the falls because that's when the water has stopped rushing through the first part of the entrance. Looks like just our standard sort of just less than a whirlpool going through a passage. Mm -hmm. The reason this one's a little bit heart thumping is because it's all engine. If the engine fails, then we don't sail out of it. Mm. So I went down, did another engine check, had a bit of a look. Is everything okay? Yes, everything looks all right. And when I say that, are the fuel filters clear? Is, are the belts all in good condition? Does the motor sound right? Sounds right. The steering feels good. So the rest of it's just, what can you do? Give it a bloody crack, mate. You can give it a bloody crack. <laughs> See all the eddies there against the gorge. Well, actually, you can probably just see them here. We're just hovering in this eddy in neutral. Yeah, we're just sort of riding the pressure wave. That's why you always find fish on the pressure face of a reef. It doesn't take them any energy just to sit there riding that pressure wave, and that's sort of what we're doing on the yacht. A bit of yacht surfing. Sooner or later I might have to kick her into gear and give it a little bit. Looks like things might get a bit crowded in here. There's a whirlpool on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hug the sort of right wall. We're going to come around it and then we're going to shoot right at the back. Here we are setting up our folding boat to go for a little bit of a look around. It's probably a little bit more of a hassle than other dinghies, but it's incredibly tough and we opted for a bigger boat just because we spend so much time around crocodiles. So basically you just unfold it, stick the thwarts in, uh, assemble the transom, drop it in the water and it's good to go. It's really lightweight and really tough. For an explore, we were visited by Barry and Inna, who came in on the cat endless summer behind us as we entered the falls.
<laughs> oh, classic. We got oh, a little jack. Wait, wait. Look at that damn stick. Oh. Uh, hard to know. Hard to know. Oh, look at that. That's a good jack. Oh, it's a beautiful jack. That's very nice jack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's hooked nicely in the top lip. <gasps> Lovely. Everyone wants a bit of, a bit of it once he's got it. Jack's got his angry colours on, isn't he? Mm. He's got his own little bed. Mm -hmm. Ta -da. Bye, Jack. Goodbye. So we're just going to come onto this sandbar that's going to cover up with high water, and we're going to scale our catch so that when we we cook it, we get to enjoy crispy fish skin. The all important wings. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> ah, mangrove jack with crispy skin. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. You've eaten all your skin. It was the first thing to go. And then was the liver, and now it's the fish. Mm. I'm just at the freshwater creek next to the horizontal waterfalls. I've come and done some of my laundry. And Troy's just gone to grab the dinghy. He's gonna drive in and pick us up in here hopefully because the tide's risen enough to come into this little spot. There's a big mullet right there. I can hear him coming now. Well, you came through, so we must be able to get through. <laughs> it's like a rally course for dinghies. <laughs> oh, wow. It really is.
All right, Patsy, so what we'll do is we'll go up this minor ridge and just follow it up. It should be easy climbing. We'll go along the spine of this thing, hop our way down, then we'll try and find a spot. We'll hang the ropes over and there's a little spur overlooking the falls. Mm. And we'll go and uh, get a, a decent view of it. We're well equipped in all of our expensive sporting equipment, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So we're ready. <laughs> let's have a let's have a look at how pesky's are tired. Look at that, ready for absolutely anything. She's got a rope backpack on. Let's do this thing. As you can see, there's been a bit of a fire here, so it's been easier for us to climb up this path. You can see why the Aboriginal people and the traditional owners used to burn off country just to make it a lot easier to cross over and get to where they need to go. It's yeah. making, making life pretty easy for us, isn't it, Troy? Yeah, there's so many benefits of what they used to do burning here. But I'm appreciating this anyway, so... There's this termite mound. Totally massive. It's got just lightly brushed by the fire that came through here. But totally not phased. <laughs> just not phased at all. All holes here for ventilation. It looks like there's massive big creatures living here, but they're not. They're just tiny little... They look like ants, but they're relatives of cockroaches. Yeah, tiny little cre creatures living in here made this massive thing. I don't even know how old it would be. Really old. There's bits of burnt grass sticking out the bottom of it. That's the top, alright. Here we can see what makes the horizontal waterfalls. You've got these big bodies of water combining with tiny gaps in those massive rock walls and 8 metre tides. So what will happen is the tide will rise and it takes a long time for the water to equalise because it has to rush through those tiny gaps and the tide keeps on rising the level on the other side stays roughly the same and you get this massive build up of water, sometimes a couple of metres, and it causes a horizontal waterfall. Even though this is a remote area, there's a tourist operation where they use really high powered boats to bring people in and to come over that waterfall is no small thing. So they use like a whitewater rafting boat with about four or five outboards on the back. Last time we came, remember we were up there and we saw there's a spur of rock, I can see it right there. Yeah. Right through there, but it's just too sketchy to go down. But now we've got safety equipment. Mm -hmm. So I reckon we can go for it. What do you reckon? Yep. <laughs> I'm nervous. That's good. You're supposed to be nervous. <laughs> We're not going to the fridge to get a beer. <laughs> So here we are at the top. Troy's just setting up the anchors for us to go down. Have you found your anchors yet? One there, one there. So now we're just going to slowly ease our way up there. Don't forget to lean back and make life easier. So your feet are out like that. Nice and straight and just walk down.
just want to remind everyone, don't try this at home. Go out somewhere fun <laughs> and do it there. <laughs> All right? Don't stay home. You having fun there, baby? Right? I am. The page's not very good, though. No. I don't think we'll be taking the yacht through that, Pascal. No. So this is still building. This is this is the first hour. So it builds for another six hours. It's pretty crazy in here. Where all those barnacles are on the rocks. So it builds up slowly to that point. But all of that ocean tries to squeeze through this bit. Even though the horizontal fall continued to build, we had to leave um, because we really had to make the tide to get out to go on our next adventure. So we uh, decided to head down the hill and see if our dinghy was still there. It's here! It's still here. What a relief! At some stage the tide equalises and then you can get through the, uh, through the gap because it can't be a horizontal waterfall all the time. Across the falls. 
They're just behind us now. Wasn't as nerve wracking as going in, that's for sure. But you can still see some tidal flow there in the background, so, you know, there's still a little bit of, of tide coming in through there, but yeah, definitely not as hair raising as when we came in, that's for sure. Because this area is so remote, people arrive on float planes, then they're transferred to that pontoon where they get on those high powered boats and go for a rip roar through the falls. At the end of that, then they get back on the float plane and here you can see one taking off and it's back to Broome for those guys.